This is the 22 degree halo, this widest ring around the moon. And it can also be observed with the sun, as you can see in this picture right now. And the great thing about it is that it can be seen anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you live. If you live in the poles, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, or even the tropical region, you can observe this sight out there in your sky. And it looks really beautiful. Now here comes the question. Why do we see this? How did this ring come out of nowhere around the moon? When there isn't anything like a ring around it? <laughs> well, it is just another kind of an optical phenomenon. For reference, we can take it kind of like a rainbow, which is why it is a ring, a circle, a kind of locus. Now the common explanation for why do we see these halos is that it happens due to the refraction of light due to the ice crystals present in the upper layers of the atmosphere. Now when the light from the moon enters these ice crystals, it gets deviated from its original path. And this is why we see this ring around the moon, which is the refracted light at a particular angle, which is 22 degrees in this case. Now this usually happens when there are cirrus clouds in our atmosphere, which are these high altitude clouds which are made of these ice crystals. Now these ice crystals are also hexagonal in shape, which means that when light enters these crystals, it gets refracted twice, once while entering it and once while leaving it. So because of this, we have a deviated path and this path actually depends on at what angle the light enters in the crystal, its angle of incidence. And this deviation for this case of ice crystal can actually be from 22 degrees to 50 degrees. And there's an old saying related to this, which is that whenever you see this ring around the moon or this halo, it's gonna rain. And it's not entirely false because these cirrus clouds actually often come before the storm. So the next time whenever you see a halo, the storm is probably coming. Now here's another great thing to notice about this halo which is that the inner edge of this circle is actually sharp while the outer edge is more diffuse. Now, the reason why this happens is that because there is an angle of minimum deviation, which is around 22 degrees. So below 22 degrees, you won't see any light. And this is why the inner circle is actually darker and it has a sharp edge and the outer circle is more diffuse. Now this angle of minimum deviation is actually different for different colors and it is actually lower for the red than it is for the blue. And this means is that the angle at which the light is deviated is lower for the red than it is for the blue. And because of this, near the inner edge of this halo, we can find more red. And at the outer edge, we have more blue. Now there are a few more similar phenomena which we might confuse with a lunar halo, like a lunar corona, which is actually more colorful and produces a 10 degree circle. And then there are the moon dogs or the famous sun dogs, which are these two bright spots around the halo. Now this pretty much explains why we see this ring around the sun and the moon, but it seems kind of empty to me. There's something missing, which is maths. Now let's jump into the math of why do we see this light refracting at this particular angle. For the sake of this, we need to look at the ice crystal which is found in the cirrus clouds. The ice crystal looks pretty much like this. And this is the hexagonal shape. Now you can assume this hexagonal shape as an equilateral prism of 60 degree angle. Now by doing this, you can just simply imagine these three imaginary triangles at the corners of this hexagonal crystal and then you can just take it as a whole big triangle or a prism. Now you might remember the optics you studied in your high school and that's what we are going to jump into. Now you might remember this formula of refraction which we had for the prism and it included the angle of minimum deviation. Now all we need to do is just calculate the angle of minimum deviation and we are done for it. Now to find out the angle of minimum deviation, all we need to do is plug in the refractive indices in this formula, which is actually different for the red light and blue light. For the red light, the refractive index is about 1.306 and for the blue light, it is about 1.317. So after plugging it into this formula, we are going to get this, which is the angle of minimum deviation. It turns out to be about 21.54 degrees for the red light and 22.37 degrees for the blue light. As we already said, it is low for the red light, which is why we see more of the red color near the inner edge of this halo. 
and more of the blue color near the outer edge. Now coming to the reason why do we see only a circle? Isn't this light supposed to be refracted at any angle depending on the orientation of the crystal? And what chances do we have that all these crystals would be aligned such that we see this light refracted towards us? And you're totally right about it. All these crystals are actually going to be randomly oriented at different angles. But the thing is that the light refracted by these crystals is the light which you are not going to see at all. You are only going to see the light refracted by these particular orientations which refract light towards you. So you are only seeing the part of the crystals which are oriented very specifically towards you. So because of this a halo is actually different for the different observers. So if someone is standing at a different place, he's actually going to see a different halo because he will be seeing the light from the different crystals than you are. So it is kind of amazing. Now you might remember me referring to the sun dogs, which was this ring around the sun with the two bright spots at the horizontal level. Well, this happens actually due to the fact that there is more concentrations of flat crystals in these regions because the flat crystals are more they refract more light towards us and thus these spots appear bright to us and the reason why this happens is that because the ice crystals have a tendency as they fall through the air to fall on their flatter edge and because of this since there are more flat crystals this actually refracts more light towards us and thus we see more of these bright spots at the horizontal level. So that's it guys for this one and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do like this video, don't forget to hit a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, happy stargazing. I hope you find more of the halos and if you find it, just prepare for the storm. And till then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.